Welcome to Health Matters. This is a virtual conference where people are viewing it from all around the world. So now, we're going to talk about the myth of the freshman 15. And who is a better person to discuss this than Joan Salji Blake? She is a clinical associate professor at Boston University and an amazing educator. She won the prestigious Whitney Powers um, Teaching of Excellence Award at Sargent College. Now, she's written lots of books, and I'm sure many of you have read them. She's the author of Nutrition and You, Nutrition You, Core Concepts for Good Nutrition, and Eating Right, The Easy Way. They're all in my library. She is the co-author of Nutrition from Science to You. Joan is a nutrition blogger for US World News and Report and has conducted over a 1,000 media interviews. She's incredibly engaging. She's been quoted in many written major media outlets, such as the New York Times, Food Network, MSNBC. And she's appeared on numerous television shows, such as CBS, The Early Show, CNN, CBS News. Very importantly, she is an amazing speaker, and you are in for a treat. In 2012, she was named by Good Housekeeping magazine as the trusted person to follow on Twitter for healthy eating advice. Welcome, Joe. Oh, thank you so much. All right, let's talk about this myth of the freshman 15. I have some very, very good news for you because it is a myth. It is a myth about the freshman 15. For somehow, a lot of freshmen think that they, when they come to college in September, they leave in May with 15 more pounds on than, than when they came up, uh, um, on campus. And let me tell you something very, very good news. This is a myth. When you look at the science, look at the research, what we know during the freshman first year at college, they do not gain 15 pounds on average. They gain a miserly three pounds, just three little pounds. And I, got, I also want to tell you, it's not, it's not just the people that go to college. You know those friends of yours that didn't go to college, maybe took a year off, or maybe to, uh, went and worked for a year? They gained just about the same amount of pounds, just three little pounds. Look at this. It's not even a difference. The guy's still wearing the same pants. There's no difference to three pounds. OK, so where did this come from? For you, I hunted. So if you go back and, and you research this, it came out in 1989 in, in uh, Seventeen Magazine, yes, that someone wrote a story about the freshman 15, not based on any research, not based on any science, just it was an article. And this got repeated and repeated. So good news, don't worry about the freshman 15, it's more like the freshman 3, but I have some not so good news. I'm more worried about something called the graduation gain. What does that really mean? Well, you may gain about three pounds in your freshman year, and then sophomore maybe another two, and a little bit more in your junior year. So what happens by the time that you graduate, there could be a few more pounds on. But don't worry about that, because we have you covered here at Boston University, because we have programs in place that will keep you healthy. Okay, but now what I'm really worried about is when you leave us. You leave this great campus and you move on because the research is not good. And it's something that I like to call is the BU alumni um, edition. What happens is, is that the research suggests that from age 20 to up to age 60, you will gain about a pound a year. So a pound a year. And let me tell you something. This is an epidemic proportions here in the United States. Look at this chart. From, you can see from the 1960s to the 1980s, really, obesity was flat. It wasn't going up. And then all of a sudden, in the 1980s, it skyrocketed. Now we have close to 70% of Americans being overweight. So what's the problem? The freshman 15, the freshman 3 is not the problem. It's the alumni edition. So what we're going to do, what I'm going to do for you, is give you three tips. Three tips that just gonna, you can do while you're on campus, or any but it can do now in their, during their lifestyle that are going to help you stay healthy for the next couple of years. Okay, three tips. The first tip, 
Except no one wants to eat more. I'm Italian, all right? Manja, manja, you want to eat more, but you want to eat more of the right things. What do you want to eat more of? Mother Nature's finest fruits and vegetables. Why? Because they're going to fill you up full of fiber and water, so they'll fill you up before they fill you out. Look at this. On your left here, you see the fruits and vegetables. Only about one calorie-ish per gram. Go to the second tier here, second picture. You see those bagels? Now we're talking about four calories per gram. And look on that bakery aisle, the last picture over there, nine calories per gram. Mother Nature will never steal you wrong, full of fiber and water, so we'll fill you up before it fills you out. Okay, so what, do you, what should you shoot for? You should shoot for about four and a half cups of fruits and vegetables a day. And for a woman's fist, that's what a cup looks like. For a man, that's going to be about two cups. So eat with your hands and use your fist as a guide for you to see how much fruits and vegetables you should be having. Now, there are fruits and there are fruits. What you see here now is you have Mother Nature's navel orange cut into six slices. But on the other side, what we have is a candy orange slices. Okay, Mother Nature's navel orange, gorgeous, 65 calories. Can you guess how many calories are in those six orange slices? You're wrong. It's 300 calories. 300 calories. Do you, for you, I glued. So I glued together 19 teaspoons of sugar to make the sugar pyramid. That's how much sugar that you are consuming when you have those six orange slices. Do you know how many oranges you would have to eat to eat 300 calories? You would have to eat four and a half oranges. Could you ever eat four and a half oranges? You get tired of feeling after two. So the point is, Mother Nature's finest fruits and vegetables will fill you up before they fill you out. The My Plate icon is the newest food guidance system that we have there. And half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables. Again, fill it up with the fruits and vegetables so it'll crowd out the other foods that are higher calories at the meal, such as the meat or the, or the grains. So fruits and vegetables. You don't believe me? Watch this. This is mind-boggling. Look at that picture on the left. Not exactly the breakfast of champions. So you have the bacon, you have the eggs, you have the sausages, an egg platter, over a thousand calories. Now look at the one to, to the right of, of that picture. That's the breakfast we want to go to. Look, more fruits, more vegetables. The calories drop from over 1,000 to 200 calories. That's a drop of 900 calories. Let's look at lunch. Forget that cheesesteak sub. Look at the cheese, look at the meat. Again, about 1,000 calories. You do better taking a fajita, more vegetables, more fruit, a little bit of meat. Look what dramatically happens to the calories. Pizza. Do you know that 13% of Americans eat pizza daily? Yep, daily. Yeah, I think they're all here at BU, but they <laughs> eat daily. Look at the pepperoni pizza here. We have two slices of pepperoni. Why they throw in the cheese stick, I have no idea. But look, over almost 900 calories. If you would rather get the, the, the pizza with the vegetables on it and have a salad before, the calories would drop and you'll be just as full. Okay, so what are we gonna do here for students at Boston University? We have a bounty of fruits and vegetables here to offer to our students. Look at this little cutie. She's adorable. She's on the salad bar. Look at this gorgeous salad that she's making. She's fabulous. Okay, you don't like raw vegetables? Go to this man. He's roasting all your vegetables for you. He'll give you extra. Look how happy he is. You walk into to the, to the cafeteria, and in any of the dining halls, it's going to greet you with a mound of, of fruit. You don't want whole fruit? We'll cut it up for you. In fact, we are so committed here at Boston University to get more fruit into your diet that we will actually put the fruit in the water for you. <laughs> also on campus, we have a fabulous Sergeant Choice program here that it, by my colleagues have put together. And all of these meals, I mean, you see that little symbol right there, will, sh will sh I be identified and the, all of these entrees will be just what I said, more fruits, more vegetables, less meat, more whole grains. So look for that Sergeant Choice in the cafeteria to keep you really healthy. Snacking, big issue here. Think before you snack. You see that little petite handful of corn chips? 
that handful of corn chips, that small little petite handful, is the same amount of calories in that, that cup of strawberries, that apple, that plate of carrots, and even a little bit of French dressing. So think before you snack. And go in that micro fridge, put in healthy snacks. Put in the carrots, put in the, the tomatoes, put in a little bit of hummus. Take some fruit from the cafeteria and put it in there and store it in there. Popcorn, who knew? It's a whole grain, whole grain. Get the microwave type of a popcorn. You can pop it inside your dorm room. And actually, if you can coordinate this and everybody could pop it at the same time, the dorm would smell terrific. <laughs> Tip number two, do not drink your calories. More gluing, more sugar. This is absolutely mind-boggling. So whenever you drink soda, which is one of the number one sources of added sugar in the diets of Americans, you could be having up to 17 teaspoons of added sugar. I mean, really, visually, I want you to remember this. That's exactly what you're doing. You're just taking the sugar cubes, put them in a cup, and drinking it when you're drinking soda. It's pure sugar. The energy drinks. Where is the energy coming from all of these energy drinks? You got it added sugar. You're too smart for this. Don't drink it. Drink water. Now, we have an issue with hot drinks. The latest research suggests that 17% of the added sugars that we're drinking are actually coming from coffee and tea. Look at that adorable cup. See that adorable cup on the left of your screen here? Look at this. That's grandma's coffee cup. That's what a coffee cup used to look like years ago. What has happened now, it has morphed into these tumblers where you can have coffee for about 20 ounces. Okay, now I'm not worried about the coffee. The coffee is nothing, it has no calories. Even if you add milk to it, we're only talking about 45 calories. What I'm concerned about and what you should be concerned about is when you go into the coffee shop. When you go to the coffee shop and you offer, order this mucka mucka luka laka, whatever that you order, that's when the calories <laughs> ratchet up. So the calories would be almost 10 times as much as that coffee. Just tip, you should never drink anything you can't spell. So forget with the maka maka luka laka. <laughs> the third tip, and the final tip, is how to manage your stress. And unfortunately, for many of us, when we get stressed, we end up calling our two best friends, Ben and Jerry. <laughs> Okay, we, we have to learn how to make sure that we do other mechanisms to do that. Because if you're going to call your friends Ben and Jerry, you're going to have a cal caloric problem. A half a cup of Ben and Jerry's is almost 300 calories. And who among us has not consumed, you know, the whole pint? We've done this. We've all done this. Hence, as you can see, why that monkey is chunky. <laughs> Okay, better bet is to walk off your stress. Release your stress in movement rather than at the table. And the good news here at Boston University, it is a long campus. So if you're stressed and you're in Kenmore Square and you walk all the way down to the tennis center, you'll have walked 1.5 miles. And I guarantee if you do that, you will be less stressed by the time you get to the end of the campus. You don't want to walk? Do I have a fit rec center for you? At this gorgeous fit rec center that we have for you, you can climb on rocks to climb your stress away. You can wade in the lazy river. You can shoot baskets. You can even take yoga. OK, summarizing, three healthy tips to ward off the freshman three, but more importantly, to keep you healthy once you graduate college all the way to retirement and all the way. So the first tip, eat plenty of fruits and vegetables. Why? They're full of fiber and water, so they're going to fill you up before they fill you out. Don't drink your calories. Forget about those sugary added benefits. Drink water. Walk off your stress or exercise your stress. Don't release your stress at the kitchen table. And I can guarantee you, if you do these three tips, you're going to ace your alumni reunion. <laughs> Thank you.